you know, at the head of, of, of Lisbon Street. And Union Block's an interesting building, and I, and I have to give you a second thought on something I, I wrote in the, in the book about the, the Hibernians. Uh, in, the, in the Union Block was, uh, uh, was a print shop run by George A. Callahan. And, and, and they were Irish, but they were, they were old Irish. Their family had come up from Massachusetts uh, in the mid to late 1840s, as I understand it. And, but they'd been, they'd been in Massachusetts for a while. They had somebody in the, in the, the Revolutionary War uh, from around the Gloucester neighborhood. And, and as far as I know, they were, they were not Catholic. Uh, the Callahan were not Catholic. There's evidence that they were, they were Baptists, attended the, the Baptist church, actually. Uh, so in the book, I, I surmise that the, the Hibernians might have met in that particular building because there was you know, an Irishman with a, with a shop there. Uh, I've since uh, learned that, uh, that John uh, Scruton had a, had a store uh, in this building and owned a, 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 a section of this building, uh, if not the whole building, for, for quite some time. And, uh, and John Scruton was, along with William Fry, were, were instrumental in getting the, the Bonnelly block uh, for the for St. Joseph's as a school, you know, they were the they were the go-betweens between George Bonnelly and uh, and, uh, and and the and the, the diocese in purchasing that building. So I wonder if if, uh, if that might have been why the, the space, you know, or how they how they went to that went to that building. Might not have been either. Might might have been a, just been an available hall and somebody needed the rent. Yep, Jeremiah was uh, great grandfather. It was uh, 1893. He was uh, he was the vice president of Division Number Two in uh, 1902. He was the state vice president. And I ran across uh, an article in a Portland paper, uh, 1906. He was apparently the state president and leading a, a summer gathering down on one of the islands uh, in Casco Bay. So they are the state. Uh, Hibernians apparently had, a, had an annual summer outing you know, convention, uh, multi-day convention yeah. in Portland. What happened to the order since then? They, uh, the last one of them ceased to operate, I want to say 1951 is the last listing in the, in the directories. And, and I don't know the story. I don't know enough about the history of, of the order. Uh, initially, you had to, had to have been an Irish citizen or been born in Ireland. At some point, and I don't know when the date is, they began to allow you know, sons of Irishmen and uh, obviously to, to maintain their, their membership. And I don't, again, I don't know the history of it, and I don't know the dynamics. Uh, a couple of things, a couple of things were going on in, in, in this town at any rate that I can, that I can guess. Um, for starters, there was, you know, it's a, it's a national organization, and 1916, 1921, the Irish uh, Republic was formed, and so, you know, some of the, probably some of the, the old grievances and, uh, you know, fervor, if you will, for Irish independence and Irish solidarity may have lessened somewhat, uh, you know, as generations began to pass. Uh, the other thing that was happening here locally was, you know, the, the influx of, of uh, French Canadians who were also Catholic. And uh, they certainly, you know, uh, you know, you'll always hear stories of conflicts here and conflicts there. Uh, but at uh, yeah, the Knights of Columbus uh, was, was formed in 18, 1894, and uh, the Knights of Columbus uh, became, was a place, was a meeting ground, as far as I can tell. I haven't, again, I haven't researched this in detail, but it appears that that, that became a meeting ground for the, for the two, you know, a neutral meeting ground for, for the two different, uh, different nationalities uh, to uh, you know, celebrate their, their Catholic heritage and, and de-emphasize uh, their, their nationality. So that, I think, contributed to that. Uh, were the Hibernians not only a social uh, ethnic organization, but weren't they sort of a, a benevolent society? That is, if, uh, if an Irish family were in need, they helped out one another. Uh, 
and they paid the funeral expenses right. and so on. And so with uh, Social Security and uh, point. other kinds of and other kinds of insurance and so on that kind of displaced. Yeah, the, good point. The organization. Yeah, mm -hmm. good point. Good point. For a, for an organization to be really viable, it has to be more than just a social organization. It has to have some kind of benefits mm -hmm. as well. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, these are fun places to be. Otherwise, avoid them like the plague. <laughs> the history of uh, the cemeteries, uh, where you'll find Irish people. Uh, initially, uh, there's the old Davis Cemetery on Sabatis Street. And uh, I ran across an article, and for some stupid reason, I didn't copy it. Uh, but it detailed how the, uh, the, the nights that they moved the, uh, the folks that were buried, uh, the Irish folks that were buried in the Davis Cemetery out to, out to Mount Hope. Uh, and I've got, to, I've got to find it. And Doug, if you know where that is, I'll be able to find it. Yeah. Um, but that, it's an interesting story, and there is, uh, but there is actually one piece, of, at least one piece of one stone still there. There's a, they made a, uh, a mosaic of a number of stones that had crumbled. Uh, and, it's, and it's set in the ground, and there's you can still just barely read uh, the, the piece of it, and it's the, uh, the piece from the stone of uh, Thomas O'Donnell uh, from Kilrush uh, County, oh, or the County Clare, yes, County Clare in, in Ireland. And, and that is still in the Davis? Yeah. It is still there, yes. Mm -hmm. And failing that, the uh, Lewiston Public Library has the uh, cemetery lists. Uh, on one of their their computers, and and they've got that notation there as, as well. Uh, they were moved. Well, the and, and uh, I may need to ask Doug Hodgkin's help here. The the Davis Cemetery uh, was initially a Quaker cemetery. Is that that's correct? The, the Davis family are the, the Davis family was yeah. a Quaker. And and as the town grew, and more Irish and French you know Catholics were here, they. They wanted to have their own, you know, consecrated ground, and they they purchased the uh, oh, I think it was two, maybe three lots that are now uh, that are now Mount Hope, uh, and and Mount Hope is out, uh, you know, is out in Irish country uh, here in Lewiston. You know, it's out uh, just past Strawberry Patch, and you know, you to get there, you drive through Gas House Patch, or uh, or maybe up uh, West Rose Hill. So it was, you know, it was more. Convenient. It was more to, to their neighborhood, perhaps. And they weren't kicked out. They moved. I don't know the story. What, what year was that? I don't know. I'm sorry to say. Again, I I, I grieve this loss every every time I every time I come up to this. I because it is it was such a such a special article. I don't know why I, I didn't get it. I want to say late 1860s, maybe 1870s, but I'm not, not positive. The cemetery itself, they say the, 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 there's a marker in the cemetery saying that the first person buried there was Edward O'Donnell in 1860. Now, whether that was after the cemetery was established or whether that was just where somebody, somebody in Strawberry Patch or wherever planted him, I, I don't know. I, I don't because uh, there's some conflicting information on the gate post that says that it was established in 1870. So, and I don't know all the details in that in that discrepancy. Uh, I haven't haven't pursued that yet. So I'm suspecting somewhere in the, the 1860s or, or 1870s, likely. Um, I do have I do have the, the land. I now have the land. Record of the, the purchase of the lots, so that but I don't I don't have that just from memory. The other place, so most of the Irish that you'll find, you'll find in Mount Hope. Uh, you know, as you come in the gate, the first two sections going up the hill, 
uh, on the first four sections actually are very, very heavily Irish. And, uh, and then there, the rest of the, you know, the second and third generations are scattered along. How, how are we doing on time? Are we running over? Okay. <coughs> Can you take another question? Certainly. You mentioned the name Callahan earlier. Yes. And I've noticed that there were a lot of Callahans around. Which one is Callahan Hall named after? Do you know? It's a good question. It's one that I keep meaning to investigate. I haven't, haven't investigated it yet. I, I, I would like to do the Callahan genealogy. There, it seems like there, there may be at least two, possibly three groups of them. Uh, there were two Timothy Callahans at the same time, I think. Uh, and one was referred to as Timothy O, and it's often looks like it's it's a, um, a middle initial, but I'm not sh not sure that that's the case. It might be Timothy O apostrophe Callahan. I don't I don't know. And then there's Timothy F Callahan, who was who ran a, with his brother ran a, ran a store down the street. Um, and I didn't see any references connecting connecting the two. Which is right about Callahan Hall in the Wilson Public Library, but I believe it's due to a substantial contribution made by someone recently uh, for the toward the uh, uh, decoration and yeah. maintenance of that hall. So it isn't a recent thing, and I'm sure that Rick Spear. Lewiston Public Library could tell. I'm sure, too. I'm sure I'll have that answer ready for, for Thursday. <laughs> John? Uh, there's a funny little story about politics in Lewiston that you might enjoy. Uh, in uh, around 1878-79, uh, a newspaper reporter was in Portland and asking about the election and who. He went into a hotel and he asked Patty, the local black, which is basically a shoeshine man, um, who he had voted for. Well, he said, I was going to vote for Alonzo Gaston, but the man was in here at a convention last year, and he grabbed my brush and blacked his own boots. And he pried me out of a dime, and he says, I vote, vote for the man, never will. He never, <laughs> never understood that Alonzo Gaston had always blacked his boots, always did afterwards, and didn't ask, never asked anybody else to black his boots, and wasn't about to give up a dime to do it. <laughs> Yeah. A lot about the Lewis and politics and Lewis and lawyers. What was happening on this side of the river at that time? Did everybody who was educated there take professions on the Lewis? Uh, Auburn's a, a lot less active. There, there were people active in the in the police force uh, initially as um, constables. I didn't find anybody in the lists of. That was obviously Irish, and, and, and understand that that's, that's all I did was look for obviously Irish names. You know, it will take centuries to, to check every name because there are some that are Irish that you wouldn't guess were Irish. Um, but I didn't see much in the way of uh, obviously Irish names in professions in, in Auburn. I was looking at teachers, and uh, you know, in my family, my in my grandmother's era, um, you know, Catherine Murphy was uh, was a teacher at Webster School, and as far as I can, from the you know, looking through looking through the, the lists, there weren't any other obviously Irish teachers. There was a early on there was a, there was a Haley that I which is potentially Irish, but I haven't been able to pin anything down on on their their origins. So, so I I don't know. Uh, and, and Catherine, understand, uh, went to Bates College and, and had a degree. So she wasn't just, you know, some, some bumpkin, uh, you know, wanting to teach or needing a, needing a job. She had a, had a good degree from a local college, you know, and, and the Murphys were, were a pretty well-respected family here. I mean, everything I heard about Jeremiah Murphy, you know, the, the fish shop man. Uh, I mean, I, I ran into people as, when I was in high school, I was running into people who would ask me who my people were. And, and when I told them who Jeremiah Murphy was, uh, there was a guy who actually remembered him and, you know, and said the same thing I'd heard from everybody else. You know, oh, he's such a great guy. First thing out of everybody's mouth. Um, so Catherine, you know, Catherine came from that general family. Uh, I, don't know what to, I don't know what to say. I don't know, what, I, I don't know how to, to explain it. 
you know, Auburn is, is much more of a... Uh,